Welcome back to another episode of Red Tinted Glasses and I have another new co-host as Callum is still not well enough to join me. Well, I think it's his technology is not well enough. But um, Lewis Walker, formerly of the What a Stramash uh, football blog, many of you might recognise that name from the articles he did, has kindly agreed to join me on today's episode. So Lewis, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Glenn. Good to be here. Good to have... uh... Good to uh, you know, experience the RTG podcast. Yeah, and good to get a different insight, a new name on the show as well. And we're going to look back at the weekend's action where Aberdeen drew one all at Tynecastle, um, both teams maintaining their unbeaten start to the season. But in a maybe surprising start was the team news coming out and Aberdeen going full strength. Were you, were you surprised by that, Lewis? Yeah, uh, well, slightly surprised, I suppose, given the given the Wraith game the week before where we, we did change quite a lot and that probably was a bit of a surprise. Maybe we expected similar again this weekend. Um, but, also, I mean, after that Wraith result, um, I suppose, I think it's good. I, so I, don't, I don't like criticising managers too much before a game in the lineup because, I mean, they're in, they're at the training, training ground every day. They know more than us. Even, you know, McInnes before, I didn't really... I'm not on the side of criticising the team lineups because, yeah, at the end of the day, they know more. But mm. um, so it depends what way it goes. It's always easier after the game, isn't it? To, yeah. yeah if, it, if it's the right decision or not. Um, I think with hindsight now, after the game, I think obviously the the positivity of getting the same team gelling more mm. um, as, as one in a in a high, pretty high intense game against Hearts um, in a ground like that was yeah it was a good thing. Um, so I'm slightly surprised, but um, I think. Yeah, with hindsight, obviously, worked out, and it was it was a good thing to, of class to do. I think. Yeah, I've I've done the same. I've learned to stop tweeting about the team news and wait till full time because yeah, it always exactly. used to, to bite you in the arse if you if you yeah. said something negative and that player then went and performed. Jack McKenzie missed out. Um, I think it was through a sickness bug. So hopefully he can make uh, a full recovery ahead of Thursday. But Connor McLennan picked up uh, an injury. I don't know. Look, maybe muscular. Um, Again, it's a bit of concern ahead of Thursday, but I like the point you made there about the team gelling and playing a lot of minutes in a high intensity game. Do you think that sort of was maybe kind of Stephen Glass's thinking, get the players to just keep getting used to each other? And because Thursday probably will continue to be high intensity. So let's use that and try and kind of gain that experience ahead of Thursday's game. Yeah, I think so. I think it's all about getting momentum now. Um, I don't think we should really, I don't think the players should be needing resting quite yet. You know, obviously this game is coming thick and fast, but we're early in the season now. Um, I think perhaps before it was not so much resting, but also all, um, almost, you know, um, the fitness side of it, like you're almost not fit enough to keep going every game because mm-hmm. the preseason is so short, the Euros and things like that. So now I think, yeah, just gain momentum, keep going. Both, I mean, the injuries are obviously not not a great sign. Hopefully McKenzie's back. I've not actually read much, like mm-hmm. seen much in the news about what, if he's okay or not. Um, hopefully mm-hmm. he is because he's been really good this season. McLennan as well. It, it almost looked as if he might have been carrying the injury going into the game because mm-hmm. he was like, I watched the, the game on TV and it was a muscular injury. But usually when it's a a hamstring like that is when the player's sprinting, you know, and, and it sort of like goes. Yeah. But Lennon wasn't even sprinting, like he was no. got a running at almost half pace, jogging. So for it to be, it was like, a, like he's already had it and that was a precautionary, like, okay, that's that's it again, better go off sort of thing. Yeah, because he just kind of sat down and was like, that's my game yeah. done. So I yeah, don't know whether it's going to be yeah. severe or not. Yeah, he knew straight away. Uh, yeah, hopefully it was precaution, like Hayes as well, going off at half time on his mm-hmm. ankle. Off. Hopefully that's just like an impact. He did get done once um, yeah. on the sideline, so hopefully that's again a precaution for Thursday and not nothing too more serious. Yeah, and you know it was great to be back at Tyne Castle. Um, I was lucky enough to be there, full house, near enough. I think when you know just great atmosphere and um, being created. Tyne Castle always a venue where yeah. the atmosphere comes across. I'm sure for you watching on TV, that atmosphere came across as well. Yeah, not well, obviously not quite as much as yourself. You know, I probably should have gone down there. I don't know why I didn't in the end. But um, yeah, it looked brilliant. Tank I saw was brilliant at what you do. Um, the noise it creates is yeah something we're all pretty enviable, enviable of, isn't it? Um, 
Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. And I, but I really liked how the players relished that. I thought to a, to a man, really, they all, Calvin Ramsey in particular, on the right hand side, giving it up back to the fans. He absolutely loved it. Nothing fazed him at all. Uh, yeah. Scott Brown, obviously, as well, doing his typical sale. Yeah. Now that he's an Aberdeen player, we love it. But yeah. he was doing the sort of things we absolutely hated before. Um, yeah, so that's a really good sign um, for things to come when hopefully we have an atmosphere ourselves on Thursday in, in such a big game. No, definitely. And I suppose given the, the atmosphere and build up maybe surrounding the game, it was maybe surprising to see how flat the first half felt. I, I don't know how it came across on TV, but certainly for me being there, it was really a game of few chances, kind of a, an intense midfield battle. And for me, the only clear chance was the one that fell to Christian Ramirez, who I don't know, maybe should have done better. He went, he opted to shoot with the outside of his foot instead of maybe the instep and, and going at the near post. Yeah, that was, I think, literally the only chance um, of the half. And he, yeah, he probably, it was a good, really good counter-attack and he was mm. yeah, put, put clean through. It was good moving by him to to get there in so much space as well. Yeah, And he could have, I think there's an opportunity to let the ball come come past him and he could have used the inside of the foot and the near post, but he's gone he's gone early and probably like hard on the outside foot, it's a bit harder to do, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those, he, he could have done better, but at the same time, he's, he's done well to make, make the chance and it was a good effort. And yeah, it was, I mean, the first half wasn't particularly good. I don't think we were particularly good ourselves. No. There was quite a lot of slack passing. A lot of the players that came good in the second, I didn't think were good in the first. Like I said, Jenks, I thought, again, I just thought he was anonymous the first half, like he was against Wraith, I thought, and against Livingston, to be honest. I'm, I was struggling to see what he brings. Yeah. Um, McCrory, I thought his passing again was slack in the first half. And then we just didn't have much in the way going forward. There just wasn't much there. No, like, pace or cohesion or, mm -hmm. you know, I felt, I think Jet has his um, his critics rightly sometimes, but we missed him in that first half, I think, just providing a link between the, the attack and the midfield, which mm -hmm. he went on to do in the second. But and we know what we expect against Hearts, isn't it? It's just a battle, just big, annoying and brutal. I won't, yeah, I won't swear. Yeah, the thing. The, yeah, yeah. I don't know how not to swear with hearts, but yeah, <laughs> we know we know what to expect, and that's what it was in the first half. Yeah, and I suppose that was always going to be the battleground, is that midfield, and it was whether who was going to be who won that, and you know Scott Brown, like you said, thrives in that sort of atmosphere, but he also thrives in that sort of battle. We saw the or many of you might have seen that clip on Twitter of his challenge on Andy Halliday. Yeah, yeah. Even um, Haring, and um, I don't know how you pronounce his name, Banning, Banningami, however, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, he looked really good in the midfield, his close control. Um, but again, like you said, in the second half, we seemed to kind of up our game. I don't know if there was a tactical change from Stephen Glass um, in terms of like personnel, uh, well, like, you know, who's got different responsibilities because I know obviously you said we, we brought on Dean Campbell but I didn't feel Hearts dominated the midfield as much um, in the second half compared to the first but I thought as well we did a really good job in that first half of keeping the Hearts' main threats quiet because Josh Ginelli only really had that cross that deflected off Hayes into the side netting GMS quiet on the other wing and I don't really think Liam Boyce had many attempts either yeah, I think, I think we nullified them well. Um, we did, yeah, Ramsey, I thought, was brilliant on the right-hand side, kept GMS to, to essentially nothing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on the left, Hayes was fine. We were pretty comfortable. I suppose with, with Brown and Ferguson, you're, you're not expecting to lose many battles at all in, in Scotland with those two. Um, mm -hmm. Hart, yeah, Hearts have got a good midfield, to be fair to him. Haring's a really good player. And, yeah, the new boy from Everton, beneath me. He's, I mean, I've not seen much Hearts, so can't, can't make that, but a lot of the Hearts boys I follow, they've been really impressed with him. Yeah. Um, he's obviously come, yeah, come from decent standards, so he's a good player. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but we did well. It's just, yeah, just uh, just a battle, a scrap in the first half. And yeah. Like I think you said, it's what we expect against Hearts. <laughs> exactly. And maybe they expected us to tire in the second and they could have mm -hmm. gone from there. But we actually, the fact we came out on the front foot, we really pressed and drove forward. Um, I think, yeah, the introduction of Jet, I think, it made a difference as well. And mm -hmm. yeah, it went from there, yeah. Yeah, kind of like you said, it gave us a bit of a focal point for linking the midfield to, to Ramirez as well. But at half time, the, the enforced change was Dean Campbell coming on at left back because Johnny Hayes was struggling with his ankle, which is probably not a surprise given he got a fairly hefty whack at Wraith and then played on that shocking pitch in, in Baku. But I was very surprised to see Dean Campbell fitting in at left back. And, you know, it's actually. 
a very well performed role from him. Yeah, he did well. It's it's been a funny season for Dean Campbell. Uh, interesting one. Anyway, he's barely had a look in at all, has he? Mm-hmm. After all, there was such a clamor on Twitter <laughs> in the last season. I used to be a big defender of Campbell. Not, in, I don't think he's an amazing player, in him, but I, I, I don't think he was anywhere near as bad as people used to criticise him. No, he was a good player and did his role well in, in the position he was asked to play. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's interesting that he's not really a. He's been at a kick in centre midfield since then. Yeah, I think um, he picked up an injury at this, in pre-season. Yeah. Um, so he's maybe just still working his way back back to that, yeah. but yeah. might be seeing him being utilised in defence if... Yeah, he, uh, he, I mean, he, did fine. Fine. he did find a left back. I, I, I don't think he was defensive sold um, as Hayes or McKenzie, to be honest. There was a couple of times um, the winger got past him fairly easily, to be honest. But you know, like he's very comfortable on the ball. Mm-hmm. Um and he's he's obviously got a great attitude, um, like most of the young players that come through. Yeah, he did, I mean, he did most of the good things right, and he's also got a good delivery, uh, as we'll we'll come on to. And and in the second half, it was certainly a lot more goal mouth action than compared to the first. And um, there was a small claim for a penalty um, that I remembered when I was watching the highlights back this morning, um, when Haring tried to clear the ball off his arm. Was that anything in that for you at all? Not for me. I'm not gonna. Not no. gonna pretend to say anything. One of those when you're in the in the crowd, you're probably screaming. Oh yeah. yeah, I don't think. So. Yeah, <laughs> um, but um, the Hearts had their first real attempt on goal um, when Joel Lewis, who's come in for some criticism in recent weeks, fails to deal with Scott Brown's scuffed clearance. Um, I don't really know if he's. I don't feel he was under much pressure, but he just drops no. the ball and uh, GMS unbelievably fails to hit the target at all um, and yeah, definitely got away with one there yeah definitely it was poor from Joe Lewis to be honest yeah he got a cr- bit of criticism on Thursday for his not saving the goal which I thought was really harsh but yeah he, he should definitely have held that to be honest, or punched it even um, mm-hmm. he wasn't under much pressure at all really it was quite an easy ball to come and collect um, yeah definitely got away with it GMS is well, well we know what he's like he's hot and cold and he, yeah he should have been way better than that it, was, it, was really, it wasn't it was a bouncing ball it's sort of hard to get down get the right technique to, to mm-hmm. sort of um, steer that in but yeah it should have done better yeah and especially when it doesn't even go out for a corner as well um, yeah. as I said more about that but GMS was um, certainly getting an influence in the second half and it was him that won the penalty found himself in a bit of space um, before driving into the box and I think it's a really silly clumsy maybe lazy tackle from Declan Gallagher Stephen Glass called it a soft penalty but I think other other end of the pitch are screaming for that to be awarded. Yeah, hundred percent. It was just still more penalty. Like you said, I've got lazy written down. I thought it was real. Just yeah, it was just lazy and clumsy. It's it a bit Ash Taylor esque. Here I say his name. Like it just GMS wasn't really going anywhere. Mm-hmm. The ball's going out more or less. Like he's you know he's heading away from goal. Yeah. Either shepherd him out or the ball's not even that far away. Just if you're going to tackle, make sure you just get right through the ball. There's no need for you yeah. know, what he did. Just a bit silly to be honest. Yeah. Still, and I suppose once again, it's just another self-inflicted mistake that leads to us conceding a goal. We've seen it throughout the season, but I mean, outside of that mistake, if you want to call it that, from Deck and Gallagher, I thought both him and McCrory, from a defensive point of view, were sound throughout. And um, you, you've touched on McCrory's slack passing, which has kind of been evident through many games this season. But I thought both um, defensively all round, outside of those few uh, instances, were were sound for us. Yeah, yeah, they were they were decent. They were solid enough. Um, I think I, I sort of rate, you know, I criticise McCrory's passing a bit more than I would any other defender because I sort of feel like that's what he's there for. Like mm-hmm. he's our ball playing defender, so he needs to be better than what he's shown sometimes recently. Um, but I, I wouldn't say they inspire huge confidence within me all the time. Yeah. I feel like sometimes they're a bit rickety in the first half. I remember there's a few times where they're just you know triangles with the Joe Lewis, and it's just sort of you're just tell them to hoof yeah. it. You know? Yeah, your heart's um, in your mouth a few times when they're passing it along the back so you don't yeah. know where the ball's going to end up. Exactly, yeah. But no, they were sold enough. They dealt with Boyce fine. Boyce didn't really do much to be honest, did he? No, so, he didn't really do much but he calmly converted the penalty. I think Joe Luce was already going the other way before he'd even struck the ball. Um, but, I mean, when it's 12 yards out, it's more in yeah. favour of the striker anyway. Yeah. But I thought we showed great character um, to come back from from that because I don't know about you watching at home but certainly felt going 1-0 down he had a long trip in midweek 
it's a tough place to go. We saw Celtic obviously lose there already this season. I was kind of feeling the worst at 1-0 down. Yeah, absolutely. You're not really, yeah. I mean, given the context, you're not expecting much more with yeah, the game on Thursday and the game this coming Thursday. You, you sort of, it's one of those games you just sort of want to get done by quickly. But the, the fact the players showed the character and the, you know, the presence of mind to to step up a level and, and go for it is really encouraging, I think. And it, it really saw the best of um, Scott Brown, I think. The, probably the best that we've seen so far of him, just the way he can sort of galvanise the team and get us up the pitch and, you know, really push forward to, mm. to get to get more than what we are. Yeah, and I also think um, we saw the best out of Jet, certainly in a Don's top this season and what he can offer um, for us, hopefully, going forward. We just need to see that on a more consistent basis. Yeah, 100%. He's, I mean, I went to the Wraith game last weekend and he was getting dogs abuse just for everything he did, despite scoring the screamer he did in the first mm. half. And you're just thinking, oh god, this is gonna be a long season if it carries on like this. If he's our, if he's our starting striker, he, he is incredibly frustrating. But his touch is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And I think he, I think he knows he's very good. And like he's almost in his head, he's even better than he is with his feet. And he, he yeah. sort of wants to do things that he knows he can do in his head. But he's not actually, you know, he's he's not playing for Arsenal anymore. He's at Aberdeen. And <laughs> there's a reason he's at Aberdeen, you know. Yeah. Um, because you can't do all these flicks and tricks but I mean some of them come off and look brilliant some of them don't uh, but yeah if you get more often right than wrong um, mm-hmm. than wrong to a winner and, and yeah he, he did he does link it like he helps so much in that regard I think just being able to take the ball down is yeah. just such a difference I think Ramirez to be fair to him is very good at that as well mm-hmm. um, controlling the ball and taking it down and you know just laying it off it's something that's so so like, underappreciated I think um, I think that yeah. But um, with Jet being closer to Ramirez, yeah, mm-hmm. it worked well. No, absolutely. And I suppose we, we managed to drive forward and we got the equaliser. I was enjoying Andy Barge's uh, commentary of this when he said Ramirez delivered the ball into the corridor of uncertainty. Um, a very good commentator cliche there. Uh, yeah. Jenks couldn't quite reach it, but Dean Campbell showing that drive and determination that you know you referred to having with Scott Brown, you know bursting into the box and whipping the ball straight back and, and Funzo Ojo he's had easier chances to score his first Aberdeen goal but gets his foot out and manages to poke it past Craig Gordon and for him I'm just glad to see him breaking his goal scoring duck because it's probably going to be on his mind with some of the chances he's been missing yeah 100% yeah delighted for Funzo Ojo it was a really good finish actually um, in glass praised Campbell for, for being where he was in the first place, you having that mm-hmm. drive to be up in the park at, at that side of the pitch. And it was, yeah, it was a great ball for him, whipped in and a really good finish, sort of instinctive from Funzo, which probably we've not come to expect given his given his previous attempts at goal. But um, I don't know, it's a funny one. Like he's come from a defensive midfield to now an attacking winger. I suppose yeah. we can't expect him to, he's done like he's performed really well, but I suppose we can't expect him to also be scoring goals as well as you know, a whole new position. So, mm. yeah, yeah, chuff for him. He's done well. He's, he deserved that goal and he really enjoyed it as well, didn't he? Yeah, he's a player that seems to be reborn this season, but definitely enjoyed the goal, as did Scott Brown, because he yeah, got his chance to wind the Hearts fans up even more. Yeah, giving it loudly to the to the fans. Yeah, it's good to see. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Odo was as well. Yeah, then Jet, I think Jet did it too. Yeah. yeah. But even at, at a 1 1, you know, we kept going um, and pushing for that winner. We didn't you know, rest on our laurels and just go, look, you know, we're going to take that point and go back up the road, you know. Yeah. Which, again, encouraging to see there's a lot of desire from that group. I don't know whether that's, you know, coming from the coaching staff, coming from Scott Brown, a combination of everything, but refreshing from what we've been subjected to in previous years. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think it does show a lot of desire and also a lot of confidence as well and like a bit of balls too. I think there was moments in the latter stage of where McCrory was picking up and you know just driving on mm. 30 yards into the into the heart's half rather than just you know settling for for what we've got which is yeah I mean that's what we all wanted to see wasn't it we're not we sort of expect to go there and win now which we, we, I suppose we never used to but like to the to the latter of McInnes's reign it was more like we we almost like he'd have accepted a point there mm. absolutely yeah, um, yeah. Without, without pushing for the winner so yeah I think there's a real good mentality instilled now at the club I think um, within the players in the squad that we can you know we can score more goals and like we'll score more than you and yeah it's, yeah, it's good yeah. to see it's yeah definitely and I suppose 
that desire also is coming from the touchline. In games involving Aberdeen and Hearts, you expect bookings, five bookings for the um, players. But Aberdeen picking up two bookings on the touchline, Stephen Glass picking up one of them. I think it was Apolu that picked up the other, but I thought on yeah. the game it was Gordon Marshall from his reaction on the bench. But um, I don't know if it was clarified on the TV coverage. It definitely looked like um, Apolu, but... Uh, I don't know why. I don't. It's a weird one. I don't know if it's a new thing that refs are doing this season to try and calm them down or what. It's, it doesn't. I don't recall that happening much. You get no. Usually, it seems to be getting one every game though. Just now. Yeah, I know. I don't know if it's going to be totted up and he'll be in the dugout so in the uh, stand soon. Yeah, it's a weird one. But again, it's just good to see that passion coming from the touchline as well because the fans will start feeding off that as well. Yeah. Proper football men getting yellow cars on the benches. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, um, you know, if you were offered a point pre-match, you'd have probably taken it, do you think? Yeah, yeah, you would, I think, um, especially given we went 1-0 down. But yeah, Hearts have had a good um, start to the season, so um, they might just come up, but they're, yeah, they're a decent team. And yeah, 1-1 one, one with, I mean, everyone's looking forward to Thursday, weren't they? So mm-hmm. that's um, a good result to take it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, if you'd offered, well, certainly me, that pretty much had a bit in your hand off, like you said, going 1-0 down. And it is on to Thursday. Um, and it's probably one of the biggest games that me and you will have experienced in European football. I was saying since probably the Dnipro or Copenhagen games. Yeah, I was trying to think earlier about how yeah how big a game it probably is since that, yeah, that group stage period. Um, yeah, I mean, it's massive. It, you sort of... I don't know if, if the fact it's the the new conference competition, if that sort of takes away from the the glamour and the importance, mm. but just financially, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty massive for the club. Yeah, it's it's very massive, and you know we didn't rest any players, um, so to speak, ahead of ahead of Thursday's game. Carabag were in action at the weekend, winning three nil. They made eight changes to the team that faced Aberdeen. Um, the impressive Brazilian Cadi never featured, and neither did their goal scorer Romero. Um, so I don't know if that's a good thing that they rested players, or if it works in our favour because we've, like you touched on earlier in the episode, there we've had more minutes for the players to gel, and they'll also thrive off that adrenaline of the result, and maybe bring yeah. that into Thursday night. Yeah, exactly. The momentum, and adrenaline, I think, well, is far more important than being, you know, that bit that bit more rested because the adrenaline will take you through if it goes to extra time then you know it's, it's such a big game that like these are professional like Scott Brown he's seen it all before you know he knows how to get through games um, and yeah I, I'm confident enough I'd like yeah I mean I can't say I've watched Carabag and domestic competition yeah. for that we can't, we can't pretend yeah. to do that but um, uh, they didn't they didn't scare me in the sense that I yeah. know, we, we've had bigger clubs come and we've done we've done well, done well. Yeah, yeah. Um, their midfielder Andrade is suspended for Thursday night. Their Colombian centre back Medina went off injured in, in the game uh, yesterday. But their captain Medvedev, who managed to throw in a lot of fouls um, before eventually picking up a booking in the last minute, um, contrary to popular belief, is not actually suspended for Thursday um, because he received a red card in one of the earlier rounds and um, so that clears up so he will be um, able to feature for Carabag on Thursday now despite the pitch which has received a lot of talking points um, they did look a pretty good technical passing team do you think that's maybe something we've got to be wary of because um, they'll be playing on that in immeasurably better surface than last week yeah yeah well that's, I suppose um, they were they did look decent but yeah not not otherworldly you know um, mm. and I think we coped fine on that pitch and yeah, I mean, I don't know. The, we're both playing on the same pitch and I think other factors were far, far, will far outweigh um, what happens result-wise than the pitch. And then um, I think just the, the way we, the way we take on the game and the way the crowd reacts to it, I think will, mm-hmm. I think will be the, the main factor of what happens. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good point you make the way we take on the game how do you expect us to take the game on? Do you expect us to go gung-ho from the start or kind of um, ease into the first 10, 15 minutes? I think we'll, maybe not gung-ho, but I think I think we will go, you know, we want to put our stamp on the game early on. I mm-hmm. think um, I think we always try, well, we don't always try, but you know, like when it's when there's a big crowd in European 
for some years, I always think back to when we played Maribor, mm. and we had, I think, I'm pretty sure it was big, yeah, Jason Stock up front, and we're just like hammering balls up to him. The crowd were loving it. He was winning everything. Yeah, you know, really gets the crowd going. So, like, you know, just getting on the front foot and getting a big crowd on your side makes such a difference. Um, yeah. So, uh, and I think with yeah, you know, like so Scott Brown, and Lewis Ferguson, they're the easy winning tackles. Get the crowd going early on and get us up the park. And I think we'll, I think we'll go in with confidence. And um, I think everything Glass has shown so far is that he's he sort of mirrors Cormac in the way that he wants to, you know, be attacking and on the front foot and get the crowd shouting. So I think yeah, we'll yeah, and hopefully we do because you know they didn't really like when we got in their faces over in Baku. You saw McLennan make a. I don't really a late challenge. He had a bit of a nibble at Medina and he caught him on his ankle and he was not really too keen on that. So, you know, if we can get in their faces, Scott Brown, Lewis Ferguson, even, you know, looking at J. Emmanuel Thomas, a big physical presence up top. If he starts winning some fouls and gets that bit of doubt, you know, because we maybe didn't have, get all the decisions last week and yeah. it seemed to take a while to get some and certainly some booking. So if we can get the momentum from that, um, with us we could see a totally different game but I suppose yeah. as well this is probably you know a lot of us are looking to this game with optimism because the away goal rules doesn't count anymore and this is where it benefits teams like us you know you've lost 1-0 away from home and you still feel confident yeah I understand I think the, yeah, the away goals used to be right just going for teams like us um, so yeah you go away from home and yeah like everything will be based on the away goal and they wouldn't really be too scared to attack and things like that mm -hmm. so um, I think I was I was surprised to see it before the first leg I'm sure we were favourites to go through mm -hmm. which I was surprised about because Carabag you know they've got a decent European pedigree they're not yeah. the marks like um, considering I mean we've never made it through the, the playoff round of the Europa League and they've been uh, Champions League Europa League play, um, group stages things like that mm -hmm. um, but yeah I mean in saying that yeah, they, I don't think they I think the, the team and the management will be pretty encouraged by last last Thursday. We obviously lost, but um, I think there was there was a lot to be seen there to, to give us confidence, definitely. And certainly in the second 45, because the first 45, there wasn't, well, in my opinion, there wasn't much to go on to give us confidence. But what we saw in the second half, because I thought we would maybe tire in the heat, but mm -hmm. they looked uh, um, a bit more leggy than us which was um, strange given the, the, the conditions that we were playing in. Um, and obviously, like we touched on there, we've now gone and played, got more minutes into the legs of a lot of these players that are going to continue into Thursday. And some of their key players will still be lacking because their their season only just got underway. So their kind of pre-season has been the um, conference qualifiers. Yeah. Do, you, do you think we'll make many changes from that starting eleven that we saw um, at Tyne Castle yesterday? Um, no, I wouldn't have think, well... You know, for maybe the Jack um, McKenzie and Jet being two names. Yeah, I'm assuming Jack McKenzie will come back at the left-back and I think Jet will come in um, for... McLennan. McLennan. And I, I presume... Well, uh, yeah, I'm assuming Hazel will come back. Um, he'll be able to start and I think he'll start on the left mm -hmm. further up the park. Um mm -hmm. And yeah, so a similar team that we've seen before, but um, with with not too many changes. But because he played five at the back last week, I, don't, I think we'll go back to the four. Yeah, obviously without, without Conti, um, back to the four at the back and a bit more, a bit more attacking. Yeah, and I think as well with, um, I know in the first in the first leg, uh, Calvin Ramsey was a booking away from being suspended. Suspensions get wiped if we were to to make it through to the group stages. So you know, there's not. He doesn't need to worry about making Not any jeopardy, yeah. challenges. Yeah, just get into them and make that. If you need to take the booking, take the take the booking for the team. Take, yeah. um, do you think though we can do it, Lewis? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm really confident actually. Um, maybe that's yeah, unfounded based on <laughs> you like you go into these sort of games and you, you look at past results and like what they've done and what we've done and. But at the end of the day, we don't actually know if they're any good, do we? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know they, they lost some players, didn't they, in the transfer window. Mm -hmm. um, so they are somewhat weakened and yeah, hopefully we can take advantage of that and finally finally get ourselves through to a group stage, which would be pretty class. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're um, filling in the confidence that Calm normally has on this podcast <laughs> in his absence. But despite your confidence, I'm quietly confident that we'll get the job done. 
ticket sales were announced this morning on, on Twitter. So we're recording this on Monday evening. Um, so when it goes out, ticket sales might have, uh, well, hopefully increased, but only 12,500 tickets sold with an 18,000 capacity. A bit disappointing to see those numbers. Yeah, I was quite surprised that I was at work earlier and my boss had mentioned that. I was like, that can't be right. You don't, you'd like, you sure that's not the Ross County game? <laughs> and I, yeah, I looked and yeah, sure it was for Thursday. I was, I was surprised with that, but I think it will pick up and um, I think we'll get close to a sellout. And even if it's not close to a sellout, it'll feel like a sellout. Um, how, how important though do you think it is for fans, you know, if they are in two minds about going, that they go along and, and help, you know, pack up tawdry and get, get a full house? Yeah, I mean, yeah, hopefully. I mean, maybe they'll do that and then they'll, they'll hate it and they'll never go again. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good. I, I don't like really, like there's so many reasons people don't go to games um, mm-hmm. and that it's entirely justified. Like it's expensive. I know the ticket price will come down, but it's still expensive if you are if you have to get food before, you have to get transport. Travelling, yeah. Travelling. Um, as so many of our fans are in the central belt, or like England, you know, anywhere in different places in Scotland, it's not as easy on the midweek, especially if you've got work. There's a lot of caveats to it. Um, so, yeah, if you can get down, it'd be great to get down. But if not, we'll forgive you and then see you next season or whatever. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you in the group stages if we, if we get yeah. there. Yeah. We have to glamorise. Yeah, absolutely. But no, Lewis, it's been great having you um, on Red Tinted Glasses and um, making your debut on the podcast. And I'm sure people will be feeding off the confidence that you've provided ahead of Thursday. Like you said, totally unfounded confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you have enjoyed the show, make sure you hit the like button on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't already. We're just five away from the Magic 600. Um, it would be great to hit 600 and see our in, into the group stages as well and if you're listening make sure to hit that follow button wherever you are um, with notifications on so you get up to date content and notifications when new episodes are released as well thank you very much for listening <laughs>